The finale of She-Hulk aired last week, and we need to talk about it. Now, I'm sure the writers and creators of this masterpiece are at this very moment high-fiving each other, ecstatic about their victory over the racist and sexist people of the world. But I have bad news for them. No matter how much Disney and Marvel try to bribe and manipulate every statistic, She-Hulk was not a success. And if it gets a second season, it will be simply because of Marvel's continued desire to show disdain towards their own fan base. So in this video, we're going to talk about why She-Hulk sucks. <laughs> Let's start with the most obvious. Jennifer Walters is not likable. Now, I've never read the comic books, but from what I can tell, the She-Hulk comic was popular, and for many, one of their favorite characters. A far cry from the reception the show's title character has received, and rightly so, might I add. She-Hulk, or Jen, right off the bat comes off as dismissive, self-obsessed, and immature. I'm just trying to show you how no, it's I'm, done. I'm shown. She complains about not being respected by her male peers in her field of expertise, but then turns around and completely marginalizes Bruce's experience as a Hulk and is already convinced of her own superiority, despite being a Hulk for a couple of hours. She completely lacks any humility and can't even consider that maybe, just maybe, Bruce could teach her something. Instead, she insults him and belittles all the struggles he's been through. My life wasn't taken away. Really? Oh, so you didn't wind up alone? Hiding away on some remote beach with no friends, no relationships, never seeing your family, and definitely not dealing with a decade's worth of trauma? And overemphasizes her own status as a female victim all the time. Hmm, so our new heroine is rude, condescending, and has a superiority complex with no setups or payoffs for any redemption arc. I wonder why or why the audience doesn't like or connect with her. And in later episodes, it only gets worse. Jen shows up to a wedding not to support her friend, but to take attention away from the bride. But it's okay since the bride is clearly a terrible person. Do you think you could help me like clean some stuff up around here, straighten up, take up some of these empties, like tidy up. And Jen, as it turns out, is a complete pushover. Wait, are we sure this woman is a successful lawyer, but she can't stand up for herself when she's repeatedly mistreated at a wedding? And that's the second reason for why the show is so goddamn awful. What the hell are these female characters? You're telling me, in a show made in 2022, with a diverse set of writers, the best these women could come up with? were these terrible characters? These women are all obsessed with each other's clothes. You need to dress like you respect yourself and not like a football player pleading no contest to a DUI. Nikki, you obviously spend a lot of time thinking about what you're gonna wear. Why don't you help Walters with her look? Putting each other down or showing each other up or generally just being drunk idiots. And the less said about that Megan the Stallion scene, the better. This right here is the face of modern feminism. And I'm sure the writers would love to blame all this embarrassing female behavior on their favorite scapegoats, men. And that's reason number three. Hey, you smell nice. Oh, thanks. It's Scentbird. Wait, who, who are you talking to? Oh, uh, oh, nothing. It's, um, it's Scentbird. It's a subscription service where you get to choose a new perfume every month from more than 600 options, including brands like Gucci, Gucci, Dolce and Gabbana. Actually, it's pronounced Dolce and Gabbana. And Verace, Saatchi. And you know me, the harder the brand to pronounce, the more I'm likely to buy it. And I know what you're gonna say. Service like that, it probably costs like $1,000 a month. Mm -hmm. No, $16.95. Yeah. I know, and I know what you're gonna ask. Which one's my favorite? I really can't say. It's, it's like choosing between my children. And honestly, over the last few weeks, it's like they've become my children. My three very fragrant children. Fine, you twisted my arm. It's Salt Air by Skylar. But don't tell the others, they get jealous. And yes, the packaging, amazing. Just look at this. They come in these great travel packs that lock. So the next time I go anywhere, I can take all 600 perfumes with me just so that I have options. Thank you for asking me all these questions. Yeah, I I actually gotta go. Oh, so you're gonna go and sign up for Scentbird right now, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. That's great. Use my code BAGGAGE to get 55% off your first month. Love that girl. God, she doesn't smell good though. Okay, back to the favorite scapegoat of failed MCU writers, men. Man, I stay. And that's reason number three for why we should all cancel our Disney Plus membership. The men on this show are what can be best described as nincompoops. Here are our best examples. Meet guy who calls women it. There's a hot chick over there, I'm gonna go talk to it. Meet guy who doesn't care about a woman's career. So what do you do? 
Uh, I'm I'm a lawyer. I, I just started at a firm downtown, GLK and H. Meet guy who expects the woman to pay. Thank you so much for the drinks. Yeah, for sure. Hey, we should do this again. Meet guy who calls a woman a specimen. What a specimen. Meet guy who would literally rather die than have a difficult conversation with a woman. Meet guy who doesn't understand the definition of alone. I hate to see two stunning women sitting all alone. The one guy that isn't terrible on the show is named Pug. Hmm, wonder where his leash is because he's a harmless little lapdog, clearly. And to be fair, they did treat Daredevil quite well on the show, but I suspect that was because the execs were insistent on how his character is represented. Have to protect the next Marvel project, am I right? But it's clear that this is how the writers view men, as chauvinistic, narcissistic, dismissive idiots who are really only interested in sex or Jen's blood. And I guess the first part is okay since Jen is only interested in sex too, but that blood thing, not cool. Oh God, please stop. Please make this stop, please. Dear God, which is why we need stop. to move on to reason number four for why I will be rubbing my eyes and ears with bleach. The general utter disdain for the audience. So much of the show is written as a preemptive strike against its expected critics, since the main villain of the show is a group of male incels that are angry that a woman can be a Hulk, but also a successful lawyer, with a good butt, I guess. At least that's how the show creators think about the reason for all the hate that She-Hulk has received and will continue to receive. But I am the show creator's worst nightmare. I am a woman, and I am also a woman of color. Thankfully, it's not green, and I too did not like the show. She-Hulk was clearly a successful comic book, a thoroughly enjoyed and appreciated female hero in a medium that generally attracts male readership. And yet, the comic did well. So why did the creators feel the need to assume that men were going to hate She-Hulk? I mean, they weren't wrong. A lot of people and a lot of men hate the show. And is it any wonder? The men on the show are absolute reprehensible examples of masculinity. And it's clear that the writers are all aching to put them in their place and prove to them that women are superior. So why why would men enjoy the show when it's clear that the writers think so ill of them? The character of She-Hulk was not really treated with respect as a proper character with edges and shadows, but rather as a caricature turned into a dark fantasy for the writers to repeatedly dunk on men. And then they turned around and complained that the men refused to lay down and take it, and that any women that dislike the show are clearly criticizing it because of their internalized misogyny and their desire to see women fail. And fine, I'm sure people will lump me into that category Category, but I suggest the writers look at their work honestly. Did this show really offer any sort of compelling story? After Jen refuses to become a superhero, calling the Avengers narcissists, that is for billionaires and narcissists, and adult orphans for some reason. It's amazing that the rest of the show is about her dating life, her name, and her struggles with acquiring clothing. And yet, she views the willingness to serve people and the world as narcissistic. Jen experiences no growth through the show. Instead, she remains flat and uninteresting, achieving her happy ending by speaking to the manager and making sure everyone is arrested. But the final and most crucial reason for the failure of this show is the worldview the writers and creators have laid out in front of us. There is nothing heroic, nothing aspiring or inspiring. Instead, it's actually pretty bleak since the men are tools and the women are vapid. And it's clearly how the writers truly think about the world we live in, which is why instead of creating content that inspires, they've created something that is nine episodes of constant finger wagging at men. And you know what? It could have at least worked out if it was even a little bit funny, but turns out it was about as funny as a lecture on intersectional feminism. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And a big thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. If you too like the way I smell, please check the description for a link to Scentbird and be sure to use the code BAGGAGE to get 55% off your first month subscription. Thank you and I'll see you next time.